This video is on managing your financial dimensions and account structures. In Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012, we've introduced a new financial dimension framework. Creation of financial dimensions is now a user experience versus a developer experience. Let me go ahead and navigate to Financial Dimensions in General Ledger, Setup, Financial Dimensions, Financial Dimensions. We support two different types of financial dimensions. One is a custom dimension and the other ones are basically set up on backing entities. So if I create a new dimension, there's a Use Values from drop-down and when I select that, I can select to create a custom dimension which is uh, user definable and you would manage your own values or we have a list of backing entities that are available in the system. If I would select something like projects, for example, all of the projects across the entire organization would be available as dimension values. And then I only maintain them as projects, and I don't have to also maintain them as dimension values. So let's go ahead and create a new financial dimension. This one, I'll make it be a custom dimension and then we can give it a name, such as region. There's a report column name that can be a shortened version of the dimension name if you have some custom reports where the dimension is a column in the report and the name is too long for the report. I can also, for custom dimension, give it a mask. And the mask is similar to a number sequence where you can uh, set what the number of characters are or any of the values in the um, for the IDs of the financial dimension values. Let's click on financial dimension values and this is where you'll manage all of the values for that dimension. If I create a new one, I can give it a name and we'll, we'll go pretty generic and call it region 1 and give it a description. Um, there is a select the value of dimension value to display. Again, financial dimensions in Microsoft Dynamics AX are shared across the entire organization. Uh, based on the account structure, as you'll see later in this video, that will tell you which dimensions are available for a specific legal entity. But you can um, share the same dimension value across multiple legal entities, yet you can override specific data and I'll talk about that as soon as I uh, create a few of these dimension values. I can set an active from, an active to date, I can say whether it's suspended, I can give it an owner which is an employee. Uh, the group dimension is used for consolidation purposes so if I want to consolidate this value up to another uh, overall value from a consolidation point I just enter that here, this is just a string. I can create, uh, make this dimension value a totaling dimension value, and if I select this option, I can then go into the totals form and select all the dimension values that should roll up to this dimension value for financial reporting. Um, I can also not allow this dimension value to be entered manually into a journal. It would only be allowed to default. Let me create a few more, or a couple more uh, values. So we'll have region 1, region 2, and region 3. And we'll use those later on in this, uh, this demo. The other type of financial dimension, like I said before, is a backing table dimension. So if we go ahead and create a new one of those, I'm going to do something with campaigns. Uh, and I'll show you later how I'm going to use that later in the, the account structures. But if I select campaigns, it'll default with the name. I can actually override this name at this point. And if I go into the financial dimension values form now, you'll see that it's already pre-populated with the campaigns that I have in the system. Because Campaigns is a, is a company-specific setup, there is a third column added into the list called Company. And this will show me which campaign is for each company. And those are the only values that are allowed 
So if I'm in CEU, I'll only be able to have like home theater promo, but I cannot enter it in any of my other uh, companies during transaction entry. At this point, I can also uh, update the active from active to same, same setup as the uh, user definable uh, dimension. And because I'm at a company level uh, dimension, I can also set up the financial statement formatting and set it up for cost accounting as well. If I go back to my uh, or custom dimension and go back to the financial dimensions, I'm going to kind of show you the difference. So the other one was shared value. The other dimension that I just created didn't have this option available because it was a company specific dimension. But a shared value, I can also select for a chart of accounts. I can override the active from, active to, suspended, and owner fields after I add a chart of accounts here. Or I can go ahead and do that at a company level. Add a company. And at that point, you'll see some of the same setup that you just saw on the other dimension where I can uh, set up the financial statement formatting and cost accounting as those are company specific. I can also override the active from, active to, suspended, and owner field at a company level. So next I'm going to walk into the go walk you through the account structures. So under general ledger, setup, chart of accounts, configure account structures, um, you will see the list of account structures that exist for the, for the organization. Account structures provide the order of entry and the list of the segments that are available to be entered against um, a main account. A main account is required in an account structure. You can have as many account structures as you want and you can actually associate more than one account structure to the same chart of accounts. Uh, and when you when you do that, just the, the main account cannot be referenced across all of the account structures associated to the same chart. So we do have a, a list of uh, structures here. I'm going to go ahead and create a new structure for this uh, for demo purposes to start off with to show you how simple it is, and we'll call this one demo demo, demo structure. By default, I can have the main account added as the first um, segment. It does not have to be the first segment. I can uh, take that off and then I'll get a blank screen um, available to me and I can start adding a segment. And I can actually have order entry order in any order. It doesn't have to be main account first, as I said. So we can start off with maybe we want to start with department and add a segment. Um, it's very simple and main account, for example. And then maybe I want to add you know, purpose. At this point, um, I can also add a segment. And if I don't see it in this list, these are all your financial dimensions in the list, I can just choose to create a new financial dimension. And it will open up a simplified version of the financial dimensions form and let me create a new dimension from here as well. I can start breaking, um, build, basically building out a tree, a tree structure that sort of looks like Excel. I can type in a constraint in a node, or I can click on the filter button and start building out the, the, the filter. And you'll see it, the, the where, because in the column that I'm on, it'll display that. But I have various um, ways to define my structure or expressions, so I could say where a department is something, or it begins with something, or ends with something, um, or there's a range. So I can enter in a value at this point, and I can choose to allow blanks. If I allow blanks, that means that that dimension value is optional, and when I select OK, that will populate into the the node, and then I can choose to continue to build out uh, my nodes using the same syntax. You can build these out as, as complex as you need them to be. Um, yeah, let me add another segment just to show you an example. I'll add cost center. In 
In Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012, we've introduced the organization models as well. And if you build an organization hierarchy, and I have dimensions that are backed by either like business unit, department, cost center, or value stream, and then you can use those hierarchies to provide the, the rules that you're defining or the constraints that are valid. So I would just click on relationships at this point, and you'll see all of the organization hierarchies that are backed by two of the dimensions, and in this case, department and cost center. They do not have to be next to each other. As you can see, I have two uh, segments in between department and cost center, and I can actually have a, hi a hierarchy that is starts with cost center and then department, and I can select multiple hierarchies. I can give it a, a color node just so I can see it on the node on the the screen. And when I do that, you can see that these two dimensions already have the constraints defined between them based on an organization hierarchy. So I don't have to add all the constraints here. At that, once you've got everything done, then you can just you need to activate the structure and then add it to a chart of accounts if this is a new one in order to use it. But for now, I'm going to go and move back to one of our existing structures that we're using in this company, and that's this account structure PNL. As you can see, it says that it's active, and nothing's editable in here. I don't see my add segment sign here. Um, and that's because we do store two different versions of the structure. We have an active version and a draft version. So you can start editing your structure while, while your data entry people are continuing to enter and record other transactions and then you don't have to put them in a down, uh, down time while you're uh, changing any of your structures. So let me choose to edit this structure. And this is my P&L account. So I have a range of main accounts here. Um, and then we're using department and cost center. And I'm going to go ahead and add one of those new dimensions that I added. And we'll take a region. And I'm going to build out a couple of the rules here. So I'm going to say when um, department OU underscore one dot dot, which is for a range, to two, OU 2999, then I only want to support region one. And make sure you spell it right. This is just a string. And we're going to go ahead and build out another department node. And now we'll say department OU um, department 3 to OU 4999. We want to support uh, region 2. And then I'll add one third department. which would be OU5 to OU999. And that one will be for Region 3. And what this is now stating, that when I am in my um, P&L accounts range, and I've entered a department between OU1 to OU29999, 2999, you can only enter Region 1 as a dimension value for that segment. Again, I could have the relationship set up there. And then I would just choose to activate. But before I activate it, I want to talk about advanced rules. Advanced rules, you can think about that as really appending an account structure onto an account structure. You can do a couple things in the advanced rules. You can either further constrain the, the columns, the segments that you have in your account structure, or you can add additional dimensions for specific uh, scenario. So let's say my scenario is that when I am um, in my sales accounts or my revenue accounts, I also want to track the campaign that brought in that revenue. I don't need it for all the rest of these accounts, so I don't want to add the segment there and make it optional so that I have to you know, enter it and there could be some um, mistakes as during data entry. So I'm going to go ahead and create an advanced rule for this structure. And we'll call it campaign. And 
you can add a filter and this is just determining what the structure is and I can select any of the dimensions that are available for use with the structure and some of them are coming off of um, other advanced rules but I'm going to say when main account is or begins with I should say begins with four because those are my um, my a revenue account I want to add an, a new structure to it well, we need to go ahead and create an advanced rule structure. And advanced rule structures are just like the account structures, except for that you can't have main account. So let's create a new one for campaign. And add my segment. And we're going to go ahead and pick a campaign. I can add multiple segments here. I can define some constraints in here. A lot, you know, just like the account structure, as I said, but without the main account. And I'll go ahead and activate uh, this advanced rule structure. And then in my advanced rule, I would just select to include uh, that that um, advanced rule structure. And I could have multiple advanced rule structures associated with this rule if I wanted to. And we would append these dimensions on in alphabetical order to the advanced rule structures and to the based on the rule. Let's go ahead and close that. So now basically what it said is anytime a main account starts with 4,000, I need to enter in a region as well based on the, the rules of the department and then I have an additional advanced rule that says I also need to en enter a campaign. So let me go ahead and activate this structure. And this can take a uh, take a little bit of process and what it's doing at this point is um, it's going through the process of updating anything that I have that's unposted and making sure that I ha that the new structure is is appended onto that so if it's a required dimension then it's going to make me enter it before I can post so now it's active I do want to go ahead and open up the chart of accounts that we're using for this company just to show you uh, the structures that are in here. So in chart of accounts, um, I have add my account structures to the chart. And as you see, there's two structures here. One is account structure, and those will have all my balance sheet accounts, and then the account structure, which is the one we were just working on. So let me go into accounts receivable, and I'll enter in a new free text invoice just to show you the new account entry control. So let's select a customer, and down and add a description, so we'll, you know, sales. And I'm going to enter in a main account, and it can be any of my accounts that start with four, and enter in an amount. Let's put the quantity of five. So we have $500, and I need to go distribute the amount. So as we're opening up this form, this is actually going to create all the distributions, allows me to distribute them, and um, as well as split them out as I want. So this is our new account entry control, and when you're in here, you can uh, pop up the little flyout so you can see all the segments that it's requiring me to enter. So there's main account, department, cost center, region, expense purpose, and campaign, and this is all based on the account structure and any advanced rules. You can leave this open or keep it closed, but it'll just uh, default them at the account I entered. And as you saw, campaign was added automatically, and so was region. So we'll go ahead and just start entering uh, some of the, the rules. And as I enter in my department, it will show me when I get to region that it's filtered based on my account structure constraint of department being um, OU underscore 2310. Only region 1 is valid. So we'll filter out the lookout there. And we will select, here's all my campaigns, and enter that. And then it'll, my distribution is actually uh, valid at this point. So I will go ahead and close. And at that point, I can post my, uh, my free text invoice. So that conclu concludes this video for a quick overview of the financial dimensions and account structures. Thank you for your time.